I'd like to take uh, a second right now to thank Brian White and his trust in hiring me and his leadership uh, since we've been here. It's been a pleasure working with him in our administration. And as I've said before, players and coaches win games. Uh, administrations win championships. And we have an absolute uh, championship administration. And I also want to thank our phenomenal staff. Uh, as, as you know, I kept four full-time assistant coaches. I kept the head strength coach. I probably would have had a mutiny had I not kept him. But um, I think that goes to, that speaks to the quality of men that they are, the quality of coaches. Uh, that they are. We've got former Division One head coaches at Kansas and Georgia Southern. We've got national champions on our staff. We've got first round draft picks, second round draft picks. We've got uh, our offensive coordinator, Charlie Fry, played in the NFL as well as uh, coached in the NFL. So I could not be happier. Uh, and I, and I, I say that uh, with, with, um, with truth in my heart. Uh, I, I could not be happier. These past eight months have been the most fun I've had coaching in a long time. Uh, I've been so impressed with how hard our players go at Florida Atlantic. They just go and how tough they are, both mentally and physically, and how quickly they bought into our way of doing things. And the way they respond so enthusiastically and willingly to our style of coaching, to being coached hard, to being demanded things of, um, to having very, very high expectations and standards. Uh, they want to win, and it reminds me so much uh, of our, our first year at, at the University of Houston. You know, you're dealing with two-star, no-star guys with a chip on their shoulder. I, I like to use the word rugged. Rugged. We got rugged dudes on our team. Rugged dudes. And it, it reminds me um, very, very much uh, of our time at Houston. And our guys here at FAU that, that you'll be hearing from, hopefully you've heard from them uh, at some point, either yesterday or today, uh, they have made coaching fun again. And uh, I appreciate them for that, so thank you. Uh, and I am really, really excited to see how that translates on the field. Uh, before I take questions, I do uh, wanna, I don't wanna dampen the mood, but um, you know, I, I had no idea that Chuck Carlton had passed. And I, I just, for those of you that have worked with Chuck at, at the Dallas Morning News, as, as I did, um, we, we lost a good one. We, we lost a good one there. And um, the Herman family will be, will be thinking about him for sure. Um, and then Terry Price, uh, the, the world, uh, Texas A&M grad and defensive line coach, the world has lost a really, really, really great man uh, yeah, he was a good coach, maybe the best D-line coach in the country. Um, but he was a better husband, a better father, a better man. And uh, to Devin and, and, and Kenya, I appreciate you guys uh, trusting us with Devin. Um, and, and we're here for you, whatever you need. Um, but uh, it, we, we lost a good one a few weeks ago. And he just so happens to also be the dad of a, of a player on our team, too. So it hit home pretty pretty hard. Um, so with that, I will take some questions. AD Moore and Max Corner. Coach, welcome back. Have you introduced the kids to the chain on the door yet? <laughs> um, we did. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we didn't do it right away as we have at, at our, our previous stops. We, um, we've grown uh, in our time, we, we trusted the players a little bit early on, and they trusted us. Their buy-in was was very, very uh, immediate. And but as I like to use the word when when people ask me to describe our program in one word, I always use the word parental. Uh, when when your baby is born, those of you that are parents in the room, you don't wait to see how fast it can run, how good looking it's going to be, uh, how tall it's going to be before you love it. You just love it. You love that child, why? Because it's yours. And that's the same thing uh, when you take over a program. Like, I, I love every one of our players. And you say, well, coach, you, you just got there. I, I know, they're, they're mine, they're ours. I love them. I, 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 don't, I don't 
care how fast they can run. I don't, I don't care how good looking they are or how tall they're going to be. I love them. Uh, but, and so we, we gave them uh, some freedom and a couple warnings that the locker room was not to change. You, you got to act like a champion before you become a champion. And, you know, we, we had a five and seven locker room. And so we locked it and said, you guys have had a, much like a parent, right? Like you had your chance, we warned you. And so we locked the doors and made them earn their way back in. It was only a couple days, but they, they got the message very loud and clear. And, and going back to the parental. So when, when a player gets to our program, we're going to shower him with, with unconditional love, unconditional, because they're ours, right? They're ours. Uh, and we're going to give them every tool and resource known to man to be successful in life and on the field. But with that comes, much like a parent, being held to some very high standards. And much like a parent, there are consequences when those standards are not upheld. And we educate, and at times you, you have to take some drastic measures to get your point across with teenagers. And uh, we did, and, and the point was very well received. Uh, Joseph Boyd, Dallas Morning News. Tom, I want to ask you about the intersection of NIL. Will you tell Chuck's family I, I said I'm thinking about them? I will. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you about the intersection between NIL and the transfer portal. How has roster building and roster retaining been in this era? I am so proud. I mean, it's, it's made taking over a program a little bit more challenging you know the, the first week we were allowed to go on the road in December I had just gotten a job you think man you should be in every living room you can get in to make sure that uh, these guys stick around well I spent the very first week trying to meet with as many current players as I could in my office from like 7 in the morning to 6 at night I mean they were just shuttling in and out and I felt that was important one to build relationships but two uh, I, I knew that people were calling them you know, even though their names weren't in the portal <laughs> uh, and, and they were getting courted. And we got some really good players, really, really good players. And I knew that coming in and it's one of the reasons we took this job. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that our really good players stayed at FAU and to their credit, to the Chaz Neals of the world, the Armani Adams, the Evan Andersons, the Larry McCammons of the world that are kind of our bell cows, if you will, those guys stuck around and, and pretty much all, I mean, not pretty much. I, I was thrilled uh, with our retention uh, for a new coach to be able to come in and really not lose anyone uh, of, of significance. Um, you know, and you, you asked about the intersection, it, it's difficult. You know, I was telling Dean uh, earlier, I, I am for NIL 1000%. I'll try to give you the short version, but uh, when I was at Ohio State, Braxton Miller uh, got called to the carpet because he was where some uh, fan or donor emailed about him wearing a Louis Vuitton belt. What what is a student athlete doing wearing a thousand dollar belt? So I was asked to get to the bottom of it, and coach, it's a knockoff. I paid seventy five dollars for it. So I went. This is ten years ago now, twenty thirteen. So I went to NCAA.org, and I went to their fan shop, and I get it. The NCAA used to be able to get away with just putting their numbers on the jersey. Well, the, the guys that two-time Big Ten Player of the Year, uh, silver football winner. Everybody knows who wears number five for Ohio State. But that, those were the rules at the time. So I get on their fan shop, and right there in, in, in bold letters, I'll never forget it. It said on NCAA.org, Braxton Miller, Ohio State Jersey. And I, I didn't know what to do. And, and I believe that every human being on this planet has the right to monetize their name, image, and likeness. Every human being. If the market says we want to, you, to give you money for your name, image, and likeness, and uh, Braxton Miller would have made probably millions of dollars at Ohio State, legitimately. Uh, the, the problem I have is the, the collective, you know, it, it's just, it was not the intention of, of NIL and these collectives that are paying kids you know, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars to tweet about the YMCA once a month. Like, come on, man. What? I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. And so, if a kid is good enough, and the market says we want to give you money, give you gift in kind, give you whatever, 
you know, Dr. Pepper, you know, I, I don't know how much Bryce Young made, but that's legitimate. Bryce Young, <laughs> what was he, first pick in the draft? Okay, so that, that's what it, the intention was. It wasn't to, to pay kids to do nothing. And that, that's where it has gone. And so that is difficult, but back to your original question, really, really excited and proud of the amount of uh, great players that we were able to keep. Trey Smith, college games. Student right? athletes for FAU, defensive lineman Evan Anderson and running back Larry McCammon the third. Uh, I want to start first with Coach Herman. You guys decided to stay when he was announced to be the head coach. What has he brought to this program so far? He brought to this program a lot of consistency. He changed a lot of mindsets, like with plus two effort and one and over mentality and competitive focus. Like everything he do is serious. Like every time we come there, it's not a different person. Everybody on the staff got the same mission, believe in the same goal. Like anything he say, like we believe we can do, we know we can do it. Larry, for you, uh, I could just pick off what he said. He brought in that competitive, um, competitive edge back into the program. That's what I could say. All right, Larry, as a uh, former running back, I, I, I was loving running backs are up here. Um, I, I know it's not an individual sport. It's about the wins and losses, right? Coach talked about five and seven last year. You want to improve that. But with that said, you were a 1,000-yard rusher in Conference USA, first team all-conference. Uh, any thoughts of like, hey, get a chance to not show these teams of the American what we can do and what kind of running back you are? Um, yeah, I still have things to improve on this yeah. season. Uh, I can't really say I'm the best running back, but as far as our room goes, anybody can go out there and do the same thing that I did this year you with the old line we had. So. Yeah. You have a lot of depth in that running back room. Can you give us a sense who else will join you in that backfield? Uh, so we got a transfer in, um, Kobe Lewis. We got Zubair Mobley. We got Kevon Walker. Um, we got Rob. And then we got some young bulls that just came in. They're kind of working their way around, trying to teaching the ropes. How different will the offense be? What kind of tweaks will we see from last year to obviously this first year under Coach Herman? Oh, it's not really a difference. Okay. For real, for real. I mean, we just coming in and keep working. Um, quarterbacks, new quarterbacks, trying to get a new feel for it. That's about it, though. And that's like the big thing, right? Big quarterback battle, right? That'll go on this camp? Yeah, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. So. You got a feel? Nah. You got a feel for nah. <laughs> oh, you want to answer? Like, you want to know who I want to now whoever help us win though yeah. I feel like we got a good QB room I feel like how he say with the running backs so whoever go out there is just going to be like a like a picture in motion like a motion picture like, yeah. it's just whoever go out there and go ball we got a lot of players that can play I had to follow up on something that Coach Herman said did you get locked out of your locker room <laughs> and how did you get back in yeah, we got locked out of the locker room because we wasn't holding the standard. Like, we had socks and stuff around the locker room, cleats laying on the floor. And basically, like, when you go into practice and, like, you're walking through a hallway of, like, sweat and stuff, it's like, it don't take that long for you to realize, like, yeah, we need to get back in the locker room. So everybody just timed up, and we did everything he said to do. So we got a locker room. How long were you out for? Probably, like, three, four days. I don't know. Uh, uh, two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks at least. Well, during, the, like, during spring, we was actually, like, practicing for probably, like, three, four days. That's no sweat. Everyone gotcha. Yeah. Y'all learn how to be clean. Yeah, it was just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. New standard. That's all. Just new standard. Evan, you're a Florida guy. Orlando, Jones High School. Yeah, West Orlando. West Orlando. Um, a lot of talent comes out of the state of Florida. We know that, right? It goes all, everywhere in the country to play college football. Uh, talk about FAU because I, I believe it can be a sleeping giant down there in Boca. You guys, great facilities, obviously. Florida weather, great recruiting. So, kind of talk about in, in obviously being from Florida, you've seen all the big programs in Florida. Can FAU be one of those big time programs? Oh, for sure, it could be one of those programs. Just like with basketball, but even before basketball, yeah. Lane Kiffin had won two conference championships. Now we got Coach Herman. He go bring like a new sense of swag to the team, and we go. Hopefully, we can do what Houston did. But I want to be like bigger, not have like no footprint. I feel like we can just be FAU. Like we could be that top team of Florida because we got everything. We in Boca, you know. The NIL is going to be there because it's like, you know, the capital of millionaires in Florida. So that's going to be there. And we in South Florida, like, we're recruiting, like, great high schools, like Northwestern, Miami Central, yeah. Armwood, Plant, like, Jones. And, and maybe give a, a, a little new rivalry going with USF, right? Just up the street up there in Tampa. Yeah, we really it's around with everybody. We don't like, yeah. we, we don't like nobody. There you it's, go. it's us versus the world. Right. You talked about NIL money. What, what we got? We're fancy up in here today. What, what are we wearing? 
We just got a couple of chains on, you know. I just had to show for West Orlando, you know. There you go. Florida, Florida boys who like to wear golds. I don't really wear diamonds. You didn't get those at the Magic Mall, did you? Hey, no, I got one on. So, hey, you know something. Yeah, hey, you know something. Yeah. No, no, Orlando down here. Uh, Evan Anderson, Larry McCann, I'm excited to watch you guys play on the field this 2023 season. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Let's get to know your owls.